Hi there, welcome to this Java interview guide from In 28 Minutes. In this series of videos, we are covering a lot of interview questions on different Java topics. As you already know, In 28 Minutes is famous for all its interview question videos. We have interview question videos on Lambda expressions, multi-threading, collections, exception handling, and also we have a lot of different videos on JUnit's design patterns, Eclipse, Mockito, Spring MVC and stuff. In this series of videos, we are covering interview questions on OOPs, Advanced Java, Servlets, JSPs, Design Patterns, JDBC, J2EE, Maven and Eclipse. All the information about different questions that we would discuss is on the GitHub repository. GitHub.com in 28 minutes. In Let's now discuss a few questions about Eclipse. So we actually have a complete course on Eclipse. Um, this video has been recently posted. Uh, as you can see, it's about an hour and a half almost of Eclipse. So it covers all the important things that are related to Eclipse from beginning to end. So if you are really interested in becoming an expert on Eclipse, I would really recommend you to go and watch that video. But if you are short on time and if you want a quick introduction to Eclipse and all the interview questions which are related to Eclipse, stay here and we'll cover them right now. Uh, we will use the resources from this repository Eclipse in 28 minutes. So I've opened it up in here and there's Eclipse presentation which I've opened up in here as well. Let's start with the most basic question, right? So what is an IDE? Why do I need an IDE? So if you look at this window i have all my eclipse in here so i have a lot of projects in my eclipse uh, and i see a lot of things in here as well i'm typing to do dot something i have started developing java code almost 20 years back and 20 years back i was using notepad to develop this piece of code can you imagine Note notepad giving me this kind of information no chance Let's say I go to the to-do and I'm actually, uh, let's say the construct, I want to create a new construct. I want to delete this constructor and I would want to create this constructor. How do I generate this using Eclipse? I can just do a right click, source, generate constructor using fields, select all of them, magic. The constructor is right here in front of me. Eclipse creates it for me. Let's say I don't have this setters and getters, I'll delete all of them. I can get Eclipse to create them for me. Right click, source, generate getters and setters and select all and click OK right at the bottom. That's it. You have all the setters and getters. You can even generate the two string. If the two string was not here, I can generate it. So all these are the things that you can do with Eclipse. Eclipse can automatically do a lot of things for you and Eclipse is an IDE, Integrated Development Environment. Eclipse has a lot of concepts called view perspectives and different things. Uh, it has a lot of refactoring shortcuts, source generation things, and also shortcuts which enable you to do a lot of things with single click. That's what an IDE helps you to do. That's what an integration, integrated development environment helps you to do. What is a workspace? So in Eclipse, you have projects. You have a lot of projects. So I have all these projects present. So a workspace is basically a place where you work on a group of projects which are done together. So I can add more projects to this. I mean, whatever you're seeing here is a simple workspace for me. I have a lot of projects in here which are used to uh, teach a lot of different things. So I teach Spring, Spring MVC, Web Servlets, and all the projects are in here. I can have a workspace with all of them. If I'm teaching a specific course, then I would actually have a workspace only with that particular project. So based on how I would want to do stuff, I would organize those projects into the workspace. So workspace is basically kind of a place where I can group a lot of projects in and I can start working on them. What are views? If you look at this particular screen that you're looking at, the views which are present in here are package explorer. So it allows me to see all the things, all the different projects I'm working on. I can open them up. I can see the Java code packages and stuff like that. This view is called a package explorer view. 
The other views which you can see here are problems view. So this shows all the warnings, what are the errors which are present and all that kind of stuff. The javadoc view on the other hand shows if there is any javadoc. This class does not have any javadoc so it does not show anything here. And there is a console view which shows all the output. So if I am running anything then this console view shows the output. So the views are basically different kind of small small windows which shows me different sets of information. So the, these are all the different views which I am making use of. So if you are really interested in looking at all the other views, you can go to window, show view and you can select any of the views which are present in here. And there are other views, there is a host of other views which are present in here in these folders and you can choose any of those views to look at different sets of things. The next thing is what is perspective. So what, what is a perspective? So you can see that the way the code is organized now is I have a package explorer, I have Java code here, I have all the console organized here. This way of organizing things is called a perspective. I can pull this console and make it available in here. So this is another perspective. I mean basically perspective is how you organize your views. So I can drag and drop and put it in the way I want and I can save it as my own perspective. I can say window save perspective as and give a name. The other thing is I can use the perspectives which are already there. So if I'm doing a Java browsing, if I'm looking through code, I would probably go to a Java browsing perspective. This will help me to navigate through code very easily. So I would go to Mav and resources, I go to here. So it helps me to just look at things very quickly. So this is a Java browsing perspective. So similarly, there are other perspectives for debugging code. When you're debugging code, you can use the debug perspective. When you are, there's a Java EE perspective, which is kind of the default. There's a Git perspective when you are committing code into the Git repository. So there are a lot of other uh, perspectives which are present, which you can use. Depending on the thing which you are doing, you can choose the perspective which is related to that. A lot of times I'm asked, what is the favorite shortcut of yours. So actually my favorite shortcut in Java is usually control space. I'll just go here and say sysout control space. What does it give? sys.out.println. Let's say the code was like this control space. It gives me two string. The other magical thing I love in Eclipse is control one or command one. Best if you are in Mac it's command one, if you are in Windows it's control one. Just press control one to do one, two, three, take any class, rename it, press control one. So it gives you a lot of options. It's saying either rename the compilation unit to to do one, two, three dot Java. So it will rename this to to do one, two, three dot Java or rename the type to to do. So it will rename this to to do. So it gives me all the options that are present when I do that. So that's control one or command one. That's also one of my favorite shortcuts. So control one and control space or command one and control space are my favorite shortcuts in Eclipse. There are a lot of keyboard shortcuts that are really useful in Eclipse. So you can move code up and down by using the alt up arrow down arrow. So I can move the code down wherever I would want to do using an alt up arrow down arrow. You can highlight a block as well and then you can say alt down alt up arrow and you'd be able to move that wherever you would want to move. Control shift R is to search for resources. So you can see I can type in something and search for it. Control shift R. And control shift T is to search for classes. Type. Control shift T is to search for type. So you have everything in here. And control plus slash is used to comment this line of code. So you all that you need to say is control and this slash. So this one over here. So control plus slash. Control plus D would delete a line. Control L will take you to a specific line. So let's say I am at a specific line. I want to go to line number 34, which is not there in this file. But I, oh, there is. So I can go to line, specific line. Control Q takes you to the last line of code which was edited. Control O gives you an outline. That's a beautiful thing I like. So it gives you an outline of the class. What are the methods? What are the variables which are present in here? And there are other uh, things like F3, which takes you to the declaration, F4, which takes you to the type hierarchy. My favorite thing to do is to go to one of the abstract map, uh, abstract collection kind of a class and do function F4. So it's just F4. So if you go here, I mean, I would do it using this. So 
right click and say open type hierarchy it brings up a huge hierarchy so it shows up the entire hierarchy of the abstract map so you can see abstract map is from object and there are a lot of classes which extend uh, abstract map including the hash map which is one of the famous ones i guess and also you have all the other stuff like linked hash map which inherits from there so if you want to get a quick hierarchy of how classes are organized then you can use the right click uh, show type hierarchy or f4 there are a lot of other shortcuts in here which you can keep trying and there are a lot of refactoring things as well so you have all shift r all shift m to extract a method all shift l to extract a local variable and you can change the signature of a method you can move a method from specific place to another specific place we also looked at code generation in one of the previous uh, at the introduction right so we generated getters and setters we can equally generate two string and equals and hash code as well uh, one of the important things i would want to show is the save actions so if you go to windows eclipse preferences or window preferences one of the important things to note is that in windows you have to use windows preferences for preferences in mac we would be using eclipse preferences so it's windows preference and if you type save actions it brings in here so save actions is an awesome way to uh, do things when you save so as soon as i do a save on files it would format all the lines it would organize all the inputs and if you want you can configure a lot of additional actions so these save actions are a great time savers so i always have these basic things present so i always format all the lines organize all the inputs using save action so whenever i write any kind of junk code as well it automatically gets formatted when i save the code so save action is one more important thing that i'll really like in eclipse Eclipse has beautiful Maven integration as well. So if I want to run as run this Maven project, then I can say right click run as Maven install. Then what would happen? It does a MVN clean install. So I'm using the plugin which Eclipse provided by default and you can see that the entire Maven build is uh, executed. The other thing you can check, I can do is also import a Maven project. So I can say file import existing Maven projects and click next and go to the place where the maven project is present so just go to that specific folder where your pom file is present and then you'd be able to import that maven project in so eclipse has really good integration with maven which makes your life very easy so until now we looked at a lot of features in eclipse uh, which would make your life very easy as i said i mean the idea behind this uh, video was to just give you a quick overview of what might be the different things which might be asked in interview from the perspective of eclipse if you are really interested in doing the uh, complete course i would really recommend you to go through uh, this particular video which is in github.com in 28 minutes interview guide so if you go to the eclipse then you would be able to click this link and you'll be able to watch a lot more things about eclipse uh, if you like this video then i would really recommend you to do any of our courses i mean we have a uh, great range of courses on udemy with a lot of uh, followers i mean we have almost 35000 students on udemy and we have very popular courses with high reviews so any of these courses might be interesting for you you can try and look at them and if you are interested do them. this video is part of a series of 25 videos which we have created and all the links to those videos are present in the GitHub repository, github.com slash in 28 minutes slash interview hyphen guide. So you can find the link in the description of the video as well. And you can watch all the other videos as well. One of the facts that we really believe at in 28 minutes is all these interview guides are useful once you are an expert at something or once you have a little bit of experience with that. So there are a lot of courses that we have, Java EE Patterns, Spring MVC, JSP Servlets, Maven. These are all really good courses. We also have a complete five-hour course on Java interview questions and answers. It's almost six hours of uh, videos on different things related to Java. So uh, those are the things I think you will find interesting after watching this video. And if you liked it, I'm sure you'll like the other courses as well so give them a try see if you like them uh, uh, you can make the best use of this git repository which is present in here good luck with all your interview preparation until next time this is bye from ranga at in 28 minutes